Yes, and we can. If, if you would, you can proceed with your presentation, Thank you. Mr. Rieblin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. I, I uh, really have no presentation uh, other than to, uh, like many departments, um, as we approach the last year of this administration, is, is express my expre extreme thanks to the uh, employees of the finance department for the job they've done uh, over the past eight years. You all have gotten to know a lot of the budget people directly, especially Talia and her team, and they do an outstanding job and keep this government uh, moving forward. So with that, I'd be happy to answer uh, really any questions that any member of the council may have. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Raveling. Councilman Glover. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I know, Mr. Reebling, this is going to come to a, sh a shock to you. Uh, internal service fees. Uh, you knew it was coming. Yep. I, it's all over the map, and I, I've been pouring through this. Uh, I looked. I went back to 2013. Uh, just in the first 17 departments, the budget then was about 4.9. Uh, then it jumped to uh, 2014 to about 8.6. Again, this is just the first 17 departments, so I'm not asking for a specific answer here. But then this year it budgeted 3.66 million in the first 17 departments. Once again, there's a lot of departments still to finish evaluating, and it, it takes a lot of time to try and understand it. But why, why is there no rhyme or reason to why departments are, are charged these internal fees, and why can't why can't any department give me an answer on why they had an increase in their fees? Well, I can't answer why a department can't give an answer. Uh, as you might, as you may know, that when we took office, there were a number of additional internal service fees which we've done away with. Uh, we have now limited them to essentially two major functions: fleet and IT. Uh, and a couple smaller ones, really uh, surplus property and radio, much smaller in scope to the others. Um, the idea is that each department is charged their pro rata share of the cost of those operations, whether, whether it be ITS uh, or fleet. Uh, and there is a model that we can be happy to sit down with you and let my staff go through in more detail with you to work how they arrive at the model, but you look at the actual cost, what you propose in the budget for those operations, and then you attributed that back to each department based on their use uh, of those services, and that's how you arrive at it. The idea behind it is to um, spread it out equi equitably among the departments that use the internal service fees. Uh, I am not a major fan of internal service fees. as you all have known, and Councilman Tiger, Councilman Stein, and others who were on the council in previous years um, saw, you know, a lot of department, a lot of areas of the government move into internal service fees, and we've gone back the opposite way. Uh, I, I would personally like to see fleet and ITS no longer be an internal service fee, and whereas the others, um, uh, that's a philosophical issue. Uh, fleet, we're, if, uh, uh, if we had more time in this administration, which we don't, we might move to that in fleet. Uh, ITS, uh, that's a good question for Keith Durbin. Keith feels very strongly that he likes it done this way. Uh, so it's really sort of a philosophical thing, but uh, the numbers uh, are designed to reflect those costs of those functions. Okay. Yes, I would. Before we finish this process, I would like to be able to understand uh, the, the model because um, there seems to be a... Again, looking at it from the surface, there seems to be a lot of discrepancies. And so that's why I would like to, to dig in a little deeper and try to understand it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Council Lady Wiener. Thank you, Chair. I appreciate it. Thank you, Rich, mm -hmm. for being here. I have a quick question for you. It's more operational than anything, but my question is whether or not that would help us to also save monies. Several of the departments that we've spoken to have their own internal collections department. Mm -hmm. Is there a way that we, or would it make sense to facilitate consolidating that within the finance department? Yeah, I, I understood that question came up last week in my absence, and, and, I, and, and I've got, I got a couple of emails from my staff that said they're working on a report to kind of give an analysis of that. So I, I right. really can't give you an answer of that today other than it's probably something that we will, we will take a look at it and see if it makes any sense. Okay, cool. Thank you. Councilman Tigard. Thank you. Rich, since I'm we're running a little back. bit ahead of time. I have my money back, by the way. Yeah, your money's right here. Um, <laughs> get, give us uh, an idea of the process in projecting revenues. I understand the state basically here's what you get from the state and that's a fixed number, no adjustments. But in terms of property tax, sales tax, mm -hmm. fees collected by government, I'm assuming based on the, the way the budget is sorted out that we had a very good collection year 
uh, both last year and, and then in, in the current year we're at. So how do you how are those figures arrived at and who certifies them and, and is there wiggle room by saying no things are really good and we think they're going to be higher this year or if things are bad we think they need to be lower this year okay. well let, let me say that um, a lot of this is done uh, is coordinated by gene nolan who who unfortunately couldn't be here today that'd be a good question for gene but gene is who i rely on uh, because of his vast experience he's been here for 40 some odd budgets. And Gene is the sort of the, the senior member of my staff in charge of revenue projections going forward. Uh, Gene works very closely with the, uh, with the assessor's office as it relates to the property tax issue in terms of uh, new growth, uh, uh, personality taxes, uh, utility compensation, things of that nature. So he works um, frequently in the months leading up to the budget presentation with, with, the, uh, with the assessor's office to be able to predict where he thinks it, uh, growth in property taxes, which as you can see from the budget, is very small. We're not anticipating a, a very large increase in property tax revenue uh, for the coming year. Uh, on sales tax, uh, again, uh, Gene takes the lead on that, and we work on it uh, together in terms of coming up with a final recommendation number, uh, but it's based on year-to-date collections, uh, based on we look at where the state is and, and our numbers, and and, and we arrive at a, at a number which we think is uh, realistic, um, but typically uh, we try to err on the conservative side. We would much rather be, um, be, uh, uh, have more revenue come in than what's budgeted, because uh, obviously that uh, enables us to build our fund balance position, uh, and it's obviously much better in government. It's, much, it's harder to go back and undo budgets than it is to, uh, to fix them on the front end. So that's really sort of, and then as it relates to all the departmental revenues, we rely on the departments to a great extent to predict their revenues for the coming year. Uh, and then in the sort of the large miscellaneous state tax numbers, uh, you know, like hall income, uh, alcoholic beverage tax, uh, business tax, um, we just really rely on what the numbers we receive from the state. So how accurate over time have these been? I mean, is it purely a function of economy or, you know, by erring on the side of caution, do we consistently come in under uh, revenues? Now, this body, I should preface, this body, the council, has no authority to, to say, hey, we think you've underestimated revenues and we project there's going to be X dollars more. Well, you have the authority to say that, but you can't change it. But, but we can't charter, change it. You can't right. change it. Yes, sir, that's correct. I, one of, the, one of the, the, the checks and balances that was put in by the framers of, this, of, the, of the charter, which I think is a really powerful, I mean, obviously makes, gives the finance office a lot of authority, is that only it can make revenue projections. Right. Um, I, I think we're, um, uh, you know, we. Uh, let me say that during the bad economy a few years ago, we were overestimated a couple of years on our budgets, on our, our revenues. Recently, um, the growth has been, especially on the sales tax, has been far greater than we were sort of comfortable <laughs> anticipating. The economy continues to grow at a faster clip than um, we thought was sustainable, to be honest with you. So we've been very conservative on those numbers, and we ended up with a, a good fund balance this year because of our sales tax numbers. Thank you. Councilman Claiborne. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I want to go back to the internal service thing really quick. <laughs> Just for clarity, uh, I heard you say uh, that uh, departments pay their appropriate share for their use of these areas, right? That's the Okay. So That's last right. week, we had a department that I asked specifically about surplus property. You know, what have you sold? What surplus have you had? And uh, they said, we haven't had any. And the answer was that they were simply assessed a percentage based on their budget. So, which is it? Surplus property is a is a different function than than would be fleet or ITS. Surplus property is simply the cost of selling and, and aban uh, getting rid of property. I don't know which department you're speaking of, and I don't know if I know the specific. It was one of the courts. Uh, I don't know the answer to your question then. I'll I mean, uh, so my response so to what five hundred dollars or nine hundred dollars? Nine hundred dollars, yeah. So my response to that was, if you don't, if you have, if you haven't used the service of this particular department, why are you having to pay? 
Well, the government, it's, got a, it's a cost that's going to be spread somewhere in the government. If they don't pay, it's going to be in somebody else's budget. So the, uh, the surplus property, uh, the revenues off of surplus property is not self-sustaining. It has to have, uh, it has to be supported the, by the other... Top, the revenues all go back to the general fund, but there's the cost of running the operation. All the money goes into the general fund. Right. Okay. But if... Okay. I, if, I'm just trying to, to think through if surplus property is... If their goal is to sell surplus property and to bring that revenue in, why wouldn't that revenue be used to support surplus property operation and then the excess you're, go into the general fund? You're, you're, it, it ends up the same place, Councilman. <laughs> But if it's coming out of a particular another department's budget, and they're well, they not, just you, take that money out of their budget, then it won't, they won't have the money. Okay. I mean, it, 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 it's we're not you're not saving any money by doing that. It's just the way it's money's allocated is all you're doing. It just messes with other people's budgeted process. <laughs> I will repeat, I'm not a fan of internal service fees, and I've tried to do. I've got rid of as many of them as I could in an eight-year period of time. You've done a good job. <laughs> all right, Councilman Glover. This is a sort of, it's budget and operational both. Going back to 2008, and I realize it's not in the budget now, do we have safeguards put in place? Because when, uh, when I was with schools, obviously, we had a pretty drastic thing occurred because of the sales tax. And I think that's what prompted my question is when we're talking about sales tax a minute, a minute ago. Do we have safeguards really put in place that if we see another downturn, drastic downturn like we saw then in the economy, that we're, we'll be able to react perhaps more quickly than, than we could uh, in the past because we'd never experienced it before? Yeah. But yeah, we've never experienced any a downturn quite that rapid. Right. You know, we've, you see some steady declines, but not in one year or in 12 months. Uh, you know, the only safeguard you have really is on the spending side, is and you'd have to get departments to to uh, to curtail their spending because once the budget's in place, um, it's in place for the full year, and right. they have the spending authority to go forward. I think if we saw something, um, you know, if we saw a sudden, you know, decline in the economy for some, you know catastrophic reason that we could only, you know, uh, hope it never materializes. I think that we would then have to look at, as a budget department, finance department, look at putting in some, um, uh, some uh, to, try to, to try to preserve some money by uh, impounding some funds or things of that nature that would basically prevent departments from spending money uh, accordingly. I, I don't want to go, I, I don't envision going down that route, but if it was something draconian, that would be the way you would have to do it is by, by curtailing their, their, their authority to spend money. If we, if we had a similar situation occur today, uh, and realizing we've, we've utilized, what, $70 million and plus dollars from reserve funds for various departments uh, in this budget in last year's, would we be healthy enough uh, in order to sustain uh, 18-month or 24-month downturn as we saw in the past? Yeah. I, I think with the reserves that we have now, we should be, we should be comfortable that we could sustain that. Uh, obviously, it would erode a good portion of the reserves if we saw that, but, uh, you know, the whole, that's the whole purpose why you have a rainy day right. fund is for those, for that, for that unforeseen circumstances, and I'm comfortable that the level of reserves we have now, we could get through a, you know, a, a 12 to 24 month downturn, uh, you know, with uh, some degree of severity of a downturn. And hopefully we won't have it, but right. but, but obviously I think that the past should teach us a lesson well, there. Well, you know, it's, you know, you always try to, you know, and that's why you always hate to use reserves. It's always a fine line as to how much reserves is, you know, how much is too much and how much is, is, <laughs> uh, is by necessity. Council, I think, has been prudent in establishing a policy of keeping a 5% minimum in all funds, and we have, you know, we've had, we've fallen below that during the during the budget problems, and now we've grown those back up, and that gave us the ability to use some of it to balance the budgets, uh, but we still maintain those numbers uh, well above the 5% level. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Councilman Bedney. <coughs> Uh, thank you, Mr. Rivlin, uh, Chair and Mr. Rivlin. I, I don't know if this falls within the guidelines that were set up by the Chair, but I was just curious about, <coughs> and if this is not a question for you, I can ask MDHA, but I saw on TV where you were asked about TIF and uh, the money from downtown, how it goes to, um, to MDHA. And I know for experience that the media tends to um, drive a, a specific agenda so we don't necessarily know from the source what the issue is. 
So I wanted to give you a chance to uh, maybe talk about it if you think that's appropriate. And the other question it was, if there is a change, like it seemed that you were describing on that interview, that it may need to be a change in, or an adjustment, will that have an impact on the need for funding for MDHA? Does it make sense? My, are, are you asking for a definition of the TIF? Well, I was seeing, wanting to see if Mr. Rillen wanted to clarify what, what was covered in that interview. It's, it's not related to what's going yeah, on. If right. it's not, rela not related to the budget, okay. we I got appreciate you, you talking okay. to him on the side or whatever. But okay, thank you. Thank you. You're off the hook, Mr. Rillen. <laughs> Mr. Rillen, seeing no other council members in the queue, that concludes your presentation. Thank, thank you very much for being appreciate here. It. Thank you all for uh, the last eight years of courtesy. I do appreciate it very much. Thank you. Next will be internal art, Mr. Swain.